Hello, I'm Roger Bisby. And I'm Robin Clevett. And we're from Skill Builder, and welcome to another podcast. There's been a little gap in our podcast, you may have noticed. In fact, we've had people going, when's the next podcast coming out? It's all nice to be in demand, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is. And Robin's in demand, I'm in demand. We're both busy as anything, and we've been working today on the same job, so we thought we really must yeah. find time to get this podcast in the can. But, of course, the job overran. A few little problems we had to sort out. But we're here... And we're doing it for you now. Yeah. So what I want to talk about this, or we want to talk about, hopefully you want to talk about it as well, yep. is mental health. You think, oh no, turn off straight away. But please, just bear with us for a bit, because some recent surveys suggested that the building industry is full of people that have what we used to call nervous breakdowns or mental health issues or depression or call it what you want. Now, I don't personally believe that the building industry is any worse than a lot of other industries. I think what happens is a lot of people who've already got problems for one reason or another, can't hold down a regular job or whatever's happened to them, drift into the building industry because it's a casual employer, they can get a bit of work here, a bit of work there, and there aren't that many demands on them. And I think the, the kind of thing, it needs analysing a bit more because I don't find general building to be that stressful. I don't know about well, you. Well, I think the, um, the elephant in the room is general building is fun, providing you didn't have to earn a money to <sighs> earn a living out of it. Yeah. Because I think everything boils down to, I mean, so I'll speak from my experience. Mm. Um, you know, I've been in this game all my life, self-employed carpenter and all the rest of it, doing sort of carpentry and building mm. work. And so it's, it's finding the work, you get anxious about finding enough work, you have anxiety about getting paid, and all the other associations and then relationships break down. And we've covered some of these topics about mm. customers and getting paid and all the rest of it. But actually, um, when you use the subject mental health, and when I think back through my career and how I am as a person, uh, sometimes getting a little bit depressed about something, for example, mm. um, that can easily manifest itself over a period of a week if you've got a problem like someone owing you money or whatever yeah, yeah. that can easily manifest itself over a week and you start getting into a bit of a dark space mm, absolutely i know that one yeah you, especially when you're working on your own as a plumber i've spent quite a lot of time working just me on my own and i look at the job and i look at how much work i've got to do and i think that's all me i've got to do every single bit of that work and the job is now losing money there's nothing in it we need to get you know some the mortgage paid everything else yeah. my wife's going god that job's overrun why is it overrun so much of course you know these things happen so that does start to feed and and then yeah. you start to go in a very nasty downward spiral yeah and, and you become a short fuse mm -hmm. because uh, yeah. no one else understands everyone else just thinks you're earning bundles of money because you're a builder or a plumber mm -hmm. No one really understands. It's hard to speak to people. Um, a lot of people don't like talking about these problems no, for think... obvious reasons. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we want to be sort of tough and survive, but actually sometimes you've just got to reach out and you've got to yeah. say, oh my God, yeah. I've just had enough. Um, and, I, and I found from my own experiences when I've been a bit low in uh, times before, when I finally do have the conversation with Becky, for example, yeah. not my wife, yeah. it's hard, but at the end of it, I feel relieved because we've had the conversation. I've put her in the picture. She feels a lot better. She now understands why I've been a bit of a twat for the last few days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that, but that's the hard thing, isn't it? It's kind of like, it'll be all right tomorrow. And tomorrow comes and it's not all right. And yeah. you, you, you sort of like bury your head a bit deeper yeah. in the sand. And that's when I think people, you know, I might go and have a beer or something or yeah do you know what i mean and I, I think one of the things is what, what i described about the job is overrunning my, my solution to a lot of problems like not pricing jobs properly and and you know not being efficient enough was to work longer hours yeah to, to to think okay the only way i can fix this problem of this job not paying me is to work till 10 o'clock at night seven days a week that kind of thing then of course you get home and the worst thing for me was when i get home my wife who was manning the phones and back before the mobile phones and everything else she was taking the phones and she would say oh you got to phone this person that person and she'd give me a list of people that she promised i would phone yeah and i'd go please you know i've been at work all day long and, yeah. and I'm really stressed and I just want to eat and relax and maybe you know watch a TV and you're telling me I've got to phone these people well I've promised them your call I say well look don't please don't promise people I'll call yeah. and we had to come to that arrangement and it took quite a long time for her to say I'll give him a message but I won't promise he'll call you because he's absolutely up to his eyes if you need a plumber 
and uh, you need them fast then you're probably gonna have to go somewhere else and and by that she kind of took a load of the stress away of you know at, yeah. least, at least when I got home it was a sanctuary because yeah, yeah. I think that's what you need yeah, you need yeah. to lock the doors and go I'm safe it's yeah. over what has it ever happened and isn't it great when you get a good night's sleep and things look better the next day yeah that's quite often the case actually rest I mean it's it's, it's, it's like a um, spiral you know mm one thing leads to another leads to another and if it does start making you lose sleep as well yeah. that's going to put you in a bit bad mood tomorrow something you said a little while ago um it, it, when we started this conversation it made me think now i'm 49 years old and when early on in my career everyone seemed to be angry i was working for a lot of angry people you know <laughs> really? they were shouting and hollering and when yeah. i think back to the way that these guys might have been behaving i used to just think the building trade was a really tough place to be yeah, yeah. and i used to think that you know you've got to get your head down keep your eyes and ears open your mouth shut and do your bit but actually thinking back to the behavior of some of the guys i used to have to work with on site they might have been in charge it's really sort of symptomatic of how people talk about term mental health these days and I can't remember that term being used when I no, was no. younger nobody talked about it ever. No. no it was it was just sort of chaos and um, I've even been on sites where I've seen someone completely lose it and I mean absolutely lose it throwing stuff yeah and when I think about that and I think what it would take me to do that personally hmm. I'd have to be in a really dark yeah. dark place I know we're all different as personalities and some of us do like to shout and holler but yeah, but I think I think it is kind of like um, there's there's this isn't a new thing. This is something yeah. which has been around for a long time. Absolutely. What's great is thanks to people like the princes, um, you know, like Prince yeah. Harry and yeah. lot, high profile lot. people who admit openly admit they've had issues and they're prepared to talk about it. And if you talk about it like we're hopefully doing, it might resonate with you. And if you haven't thought to yourself, actually, it might be a slight mental health issue i've got uh, you know you might it's not not till other people talk about it you realize actually that's how i feel or whatever yeah. i didn't realize that's what you class as mental health and let's face it they reckon that one in every four people at some time in their life is going to need some kind of help some kind of guidance some kind of counseling because of mental health problems that's a lot of people isn't it you yeah, know so of, i mean there's three of us here now yeah that means you know yeah probably one of us um, yeah, yeah. or all of us but um <laughs> i mean and, and, and you said it's not just building to the building trade, no, of course. No, I mean, no, look at these you know, doctors and how many hours they have to do and what they have to suffer and all the rest of it and the personal responsibility to patients. And Yeah, I, I think the big problem for us and, and something that's really kept my nose to the wheel over the years is that, uh, you know, I, I, one of my neighbours, ex neighbours she was a teacher. And when, when the sun was shining, she was off with stress, lying on a sun lounger with a bottle of wine and all the rest of it, you know. She was getting paid stress days off mm. you know and I'm not saying she was milking it but she was but um, <laughs> but for us nobody pays us if you have days off with stress you, you you know you lose it you're on your own nobody's paying the bills so you kind of have to keep yourself going and I think maybe that's why the building industry in particular when people talk about it is one of those things where you actually put yourself through the ringer where you don't throw your hands up and say oh, I've had enough I can't, yeah. I can't cope I need some days off you just carry on and carry on and carry on the other thing is, I think, that we don't take enough holidays, generally, mm. because all the jobs are overrun, and I've had that situation where my wife has been packing the car, getting everything ready, I'm still at work, we're due to leave, and the kids are ready, mm. and I'm still I've got, look, I've been another three hours, another four hours, mm. I can't, and even to the situation where we've gone on holiday, I've had to nip back, mm. and then go back down mm. to, you mm. know, that was all right mm. when we were in England, when, when yeah, we were abroad, yeah. it's a bit harder. But all those things, all those things that you don't do, like have decent breaks, good sleep, which is very hard to come by, because you've got a stressful job, you find yourself thinking about it all night long, mm. waking up in the middle of the night, mm and thinking about it that you get some bleak thoughts in so i know that we're very sort of um you know building focused and everything's really great and we're always cutting timber and hammering things and building things but yeah. you know I'll, I'll talk about something which i practice not often but i do practice and it's called mindfulness oh yeah and so basically um, mindfulness is sort of being in the here and the now and taking time to relax and to think and also to sort of like um, channel your thoughts away from what it is that's giving you the anxiety or making you feel down and depressed. And I think that um, I've 
got an app actually on my phone which I set at eight o'clock every every evening and it's it'll right. be a 15 minute I just sit and listen to it I don't do it every day because some days I feel I'm excited about something else so I, I'm not in that place but sometimes if it's been a particularly busy day and everything's a bit oh muddled just have a shower chill out on the bed stick that on for 15 minutes listen to it and it's like um, a reset switch is it and when you come out of that I think to myself actually that problem isn't so much of a problem is it no and this one well that'd be fine after the day after tomorrow when that happens and mm. and it makes you sort of focus because sometimes your mind gets into a bit of a jumble and it's that jumble that that you can't yeah. unscrabble unless you really try to stop thinking it you know I think one of the things that I've I've discovered which I've been told is that um, if, if you are depressed it's very easy for every thought you have to lead down the same road and end up at this bleak negative place yeah so whatever you're thinking about at some point it all channels down you find yourself back on that path going oh it's just want to end it or it's too much and some of what you have to do the talking cure as they call it is to find different pathways for your mind to go because it will always go down that well-worn track yeah but actually the outcomes are a hell of a lot better and when you look around you when you look at the kind of lives we live really you know we live better than the king of england lived a hundred years ago because you know they didn't have central heating nice cars television mm. jet airplanes all the other things internet phones so we've got a lot to be grateful about no hell of a lot to be the, grateful the about. king the king didn't have those things but what we've got now is access to anything we want and i think that um i know for a fact that you know i hear i hear um sort of the next generation down from me and they're saying oh i need to get my flat i need to get it furnished i need to get this i need to get that and so you put yourself under tremendous pressure because it's everything you can go get 0 percent finance on this and you can go and buy that over there and you can you know it's almost like with it's, it's not about doing a little bit at a time it's all at once and that's where you put yourself under tremendous pressure tremendous pressure i think you know anyone who's watching this piece um just about your own experiences for example you know if, if anything resonates with you for example the feeling of um weights on your shoulders the feeling of overwhelming pressure from you know from the customer from the bank and and how do you deal with it because there is nowhere to turn for a self-employed person you know it's almost yeah. like you just think oh it'll be fine i'll get the next job in and that'll cover a bit of that yeah. one or whatever yeah. it is really tough and i do i personally would love to be employed and paid a wage but <laughs> I'm, I'm unemployable that's the yeah, problem it wouldn't last long would i'm it? unemployable because i know I'm, a lot of people have done that and they they do it for a while and then they start thinking oh do you know what i was happier when i was on my own doing my own thing i think you know it's it's one of those things the grass is always greener anyway isn't it but not but, in here not in my garden eh? <laughs> Churchill's black dog as he called it can visit anybody at any time and it's not confined to gender it's not going to happen to men more than women or women more than men or any particular age group yeah I suppose young people get depressed more than old people but somewhere down the line you know it can visit you so what you need really is a few strategies for dealing with it now for myself one of the things that really works for me and I've, I've learned you know when i get depressed when i was younger and so on is to get out and exercise yeah i find that tremendously important so even if i've been working hard all day long i still go right this evening i'm going to go for a run or go on my bike a lovely summer evening i'll go out and do 20 30 miles on my bike and just almost immediately i get out and I start pedaling the thoughts just lift and i'm suddenly happy you know and i've read several you know autobiographies by people like you know arthur miller for example he was a writer but he said he was never happier than when he was constructing he was building his own house timber frame houses and he was out there doing that kind of work i know loads of other examples of people roger daughtry funnily enough when he come back from a gig while the rest of them were all drinking and drugs and everything he was getting out there digging ditches and and making pots and, and getting totally immersed even scraping paint off you know all those people samuel beckett he said that he just loved physical work mm. because it released him from the anxiety so ironically we're talking about people in the industry building industry getting depressed but mm. some people the thing that they find you know they're an accountant or whatever yeah and they find that if they can get out of the weekend do a bit of gardening or something yeah. like that immediately it, it releases it now i've got another friend here who got a dog 
and when he got a dog he got it because his daughter was nagging him into getting a dog but the result was that as most parents know you're the one who ends up walking the dog but immediately a tremendous benefit to him because he had that daily walk with the dog the dog wouldn't let him not have the walk and it disciplined him into a whole thing and That's you know amazing. what? He met other people who had dogs as well, and uh, now they can all be depressed together. <laughs> <laughs> now, on a serious note, um, yeah, there's lots of charities out there as well, yeah, isn't yeah. there? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the Samaritans is probably the most famous one, but there's mine. There's a load of different people, so you can get yeah, you can get somebody to talk to. And yeah. uh, but I think um, for a lot of people, maybe they feel it shows a sign of weakness, or maybe they feel it's. Um, defeatism or something like that but actually it's a tough old world out there and I really do think that sometimes um, you have to recognize that we're not indestructible and you know we, we have to at least recognize those feelings and do something about them um, yeah I don't like to share them too much with other people because I think no friend wants you going around going oh I feel terrible I feel depressed and I think uh, when I look at you know people that came back from First World War, Second World War, yeah. with all that shell shock, all that trauma, and they just had to deal with it. They just had to go home. There was no counselling. It was, you know, suffering all kinds of men mental anxiety throughout their life from their experiences. Mm. But there was nothing there for them. They just had to mm. go home, get on with it, and mm. pay the rent. And so, and, and there's a little bit of me that feels the more we acknowledge these things the more people are being sucked into oh I've got depression I've got mm. I don't know it's a tricky one isn't it I'm yeah, not it saying I'm not, well, it's, I you're... sound like I'm contradicting myself and I'm not all I'm saying is that I think there's a point at which you you think okay I've got this I need to deal with it I need to take these strategies reduce my work stop drinking that's yeah. one of the things isn't it all those things that actually add to the stress and sort it out a little bit for yourself if you can mm. because relying on other people is sometimes you know they become a crutch don't they they become somebody for you to lean on and uh, you know i don't know it's, yeah. it's a tricky one yeah it, really it certainly is. is a tough subject and um you know i'm sure i'm sure every one of you out there has had experiences in your lives where things are going bad or you feel bad or anything else and you know, share, share them here. Just mention them, talk about them, and maybe um, you know your experiences might help someone else recognise yeah. an experience that they're going through at the time. What would be really great is if we found people who had the answer, who found the answer, who used to suffer from all kinds of anxiety and depression, and either changed their job, changed their lifestyle, changed something in their life, and that improved their outlook and, and improved what well, you know they've got now. So, like you say, your idea, quarter of an hour every evening, just. Yeah, that's my little me time and yeah. uh, you know whatever it is but don't hit the bottle for goodness sake because that leads to worse depression yeah. doesn't it you know and yeah. I've seen a good few friends who've gone that way and uh, and never recovered so you know whatever it is you need um, try and make sure it's healthy and fancy a pint organic. now <laughs> now you said that it's about that time actually isn't it well it's yeah there's suns over the yard well, we have worked hard today and I suppose you could that's another thing that people say is give yourself little rewards in life you know because if you're if you're stuck on a job and you think i've got to get this job finished say to yourself when i finish that job i'm having a day off i'm going to go and play golf or whatever yeah. your particular thing is stick that up as a as a reward for yourself and say don't just finish that job go straight into your next job and go your mates are phoning you up saying you're going to play golf and you go oh, i haven't got time i'm so busy i'm so busy because actually mm. you know doing a little bit less work but doing it more effectively it's like sharpening your tools isn't it yeah my my late father-in-law once said to me when i was a lot younger when i was doing seven days a week and trying to just sort of like take the world on yeah. he said to me he was in the building trade he was a bricklayer and um he said to me i don't know why you think that you got to do it all yourself he says because if anything happened to you he said there'd be someone else there tomorrow doing it for you yeah. You know, I, I used to think I had to do everything. I couldn't trust anybody. It was kind of like, oh, you know, I want to cut this myself. I want to fix that myself. I want to make it all. I just had to learn to delegate a bit. And even though things aren't always the same as how you want them, you've got to do it because he was right. You know, you burn yourself into the ground. You end up ill or, you know, you run yourself down and you end up, you know, with, with a throat infection or something like that. So I'll you have to you recognise what, that. I'll tell you where I think you really scored, all right? This is me looking at your life from, from the outside, right? I think where you've, it's really worked for you is that you've surrounded yourself with people who are like-minded, who are good, and you've weeded them out over the years, 
And so if you've got a bricklayer, you make sure he's a good bricklayer and he's in tune with what you want to do. Plaster, all those different trades, roofer, Andy, you've got, you know, you, you've got Gary doing your plumbing, all of them, I couldn't fault. I look at them and I think they are first class guys. Now you have spent your time sifting through probably a lot of dross, got rid of, to find those people and to treat them really well as you'd be treated yourself so mm. in other words pay them more than they even mm. ask for mm. and i know you do that sometimes mm. they tell you and you say no no i'm going to pay you this and that makes sure they turn up yeah and they work for you and they're loyal and they're dedicated and, and if the phone rings they go oh it's robin I, yeah i'll go and do that job i won't dodge him i'll go and do that job because they want to keep that relationship and in doing that you have actually got rid of a load of pressure because you can just say yeah it's true the top guys on the job I know this job's going to mm. go right. I'm not going to have to go running around afterwards putting stuff right that they've mm. done wrong, yeah? Am no, I that right is there? true. That's dead true. And um, one of my sayings in life was when I started out, I was only young and I had to get sort of bring labour in. A lot of the labour I was bringing in carpenters mm. to, uh, you know, to help me get the jobs done were obviously older than me. And they were thinking, who is this young bloke? And I looked like a baby anyway at the yeah, time. Yeah, and yeah. so they'd say, who is this bloke? You know, and, and so I had to sort of, very early on learn how to sort of treat people and to keep them basically yeah. and i'd say you don't work for me you work with me the very fact that you you know you, your money comes via me or or my or my client which is often the case the clients yeah, will pay yeah. in direction yeah. um it, that, that's basically how i roll and um it's worked for me and yeah. when i do start a relationship with someone like work relationship and all the rest of it i'm really conscious of how people feel i try to be conscious of how people feel because everybody's different some people get upset quite easily and yeah. i have upset people before <laughs> and i haven't realized it and then yeah, it's sort of yeah. come back bit me in the bum yeah, um yeah. so i just think that you, you you can't just think i'm the boss you're the worker you have to think a bit a little bit more corporate about it really if you was yeah. working for one of these big search engines or something like that where they've got a pool table and a tennis table and you can go and have a nap in a sleep pod and all that sort of stuff i'm sure that's what they do yeah they, they do yeah. california um, lifestyle they're right. kind of like they address every aspect of it don't they you know yeah. they're even freezing yeah. eggs now so girls can have a full career and have a baby later you know i mean it's unbelievable but i think you have to do adopt a little bit of that in us in our lives as well and without sort of saying to someone it's fine it's quarter to nine doesn't matter that you're 45 minutes late again that's fine no you've got to have you've got to have standards yeah, yeah. but if you get the right people then they want to come with you and they'll be there i'm just going to say one thing right it's a bit of a confession i've never told you this before on, robin but when i first met you and you're talking back about you know a long time 20 odd years ago baby face you were I, I, and i saw this guy and it, it, i'm a builder and i thought really and there was a bit of me that just couldn't connect that. I was looking at you, you had a hundred quid haircut, even then, which is probably worth about 200 quid. You look, you know, really nicely dressed, everything, and everything about you was a little bit, not what I expected from a builder. And so I understand how those guys are going, who is this guy, yeah. what's he doing? And it was only when I went out and saw your work, first time I went out on site with you, and I saw what you were doing and I thought, he's a builder, <laughs> I respect, it changed my, whole perception of you just seeing that job yeah. and going this guy knows what he's doing he's, yeah he, he, he when i brush up Roger, and i go out into a social circle then they don't know who or, who or what i do i might say oh hello i'm so and so what's your name and i say i'm robin then what do you do oh, I'm, a, I'm a carpenter i'm a builder and they go oh we thought you might be a hairdresser <laughs> and i've <laughs> had it. that i've had that five out of ten times and i go really oh, i might be all right at cutting hair i've never tried it but i'll give it a go there's always a fallback career for you isn't it there you go if the building gets too stressful get out the scissors yeah happy days How hard could do, i could do it with a saw what could possibly go wrong what i'd like you to do is check out the links in the description below and there's some useful articles there you might want to read and also um tell us about your solutions to how or how you get through your day and your week and your month um we, we, we probably don't want to hear too many horror stories oh i do i don't mind well i, I, I mind. think it'd be great if we can just share ideas yeah. and maybe we'll revisit this subject through some of those ideas that come out because i think it's something that um, we need to touch on and we need to look Back well, in the future. Uh, do you know what? I think we're going to let the viewers decide. Okay. You know, if they think that that's what we ought to look at yeah. again, then certainly we, we'll explore it a bit more and maybe we'll talk to some experts. But uh, whatever your suggestions are for podcasts, we're up for it. We want to do more of these. And if you've got subjects you want us to cover, I, I really love the fact that when we went out 
last weekend you and me yep. to, the, to the Merchants Open Day, DW Nye, that we met so many people who said, this has been really useful yeah. to us. This has been such a resource. And, and I was surprised by that. Really, yeah, honestly, I was actually. And uh, gratified and it's a good reason to keep doing it. Yeah, so this is the beauty of YouTube. We can bring you some content. And, and, and the we podcast, can, of and course. The, yeah, we can bring you some content. We can bring you the podcast. You can listen to them. You can download them. And it keeps you away from all that other social media that you spend too much time on where you see all your friends having wonderful lives and you think it's only me who's having a bad life. Believe me, you me. Place, some of the places in social media are just going to bring you down. So stick to YouTube, guys. I call that other stuff anti-social media. Anti-social media. Yeah, yeah there you go. And if you've got kids, make sure they don't spend too much time on social media. How'd you do that? Turn it off. <laughs> so take care of yourselves. And each other. Don't forget each other. <laughs>